First, I wanted to bring in our old buddy, Paul Gunter. Paul is the uh, director of the Reactor Oversight Project at BeyondNuclear.org. Um, the, uh, the Twitter handle is also Beyond Nuclear. And, uh, Paul, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Tom. Glad to be here. So I wanted to get, you know, just a, a broad update on the state of, uh, you know, nuclear energy, nuclear weaponry, nuclear this and that around the world, but, but also uh, a floating Chernobyl heading for the Arctic. Tell me about this. Yeah, the, uh, the Russian government, uh, through the um, oversight of Rosatom, uh, they have got the um, Lomonosov floating nuclear power plant uh, in uh, north, well, off the coast of northwest Siberia, uh, above the Arctic Circle. And uh, this is um, a uh, nuclear power project uh, that has been underway for about a decade now, uh, but they finally got the first of seven proposed floating nuclear power plants. These are these small modular reactors. Um, this, uh, the Lomonosov is, um, it's two 35 megawatt pressurized water reactors on a flat bottom barge that's uh, 21,500 tons about 450 feet long and um, they're uh, they've got it, uh, uh, it because it's a barge it's being it's been towed uh, up above the Arctic uh, into the Arctic Ocean where uh, the Russians are going to use it for extracting oil and uh, natural gas in the Arctic Ocean and uh, they, they're also talking about using it for uh, other fossil fuel extraction uh, off in um, off the coast of um, uh, Siberia, and so um, this particular reactor, it, these 235 megawatt reactors, are about eight years behind schedule, and they they were three times over budget. So this is sort of typical for nuclear power anywhere. They can't complete it on time, and they certainly have no idea how much the final cost is going to be. But this is an extremely challenging and under unpredictable situation uh, for um, putting uh, nuclear power on a on a barge that is um, going to be um, extremely dangerous uh, because of several factors. Uh, because this is a barge, uh, there's uh, of course no uh, uh, steering uh, or propulsion. So this is zero self-maneuvering. It's 100% reliant on towing craft. Um, and uh, it's uh, flat-bottomed, so it's going to be low resistant to wind. It's going to also be highly vulnerable to a uh, tsunami uh, if, if such a thing happens. And, and you know, they're uh, using this um, particular uh, reactor system in a very seismic uh, uh, active area of the world. And, uh, you know, these things are extremely energy saturated equipment. So you're packing two nuclear reactors into the same one hull, uh, which makes it vulnerable to uh, explosion from things like hydrogen gas or fire, um, high energy electrical arcs, um, loads of operational radiation. Um, these things are going to be operating for uh, on three-year fuel cycles, and uh, the barge will be carrying about three to four uh, fuel loadings uh, at sea. So they're talking about 10 to 12 years of operation before returning it to dry dock. So you've got, you're going to have all that nuclear waste uh, and liquid and um, solid, this is, includes the irradiated fuel, all stored on this floating barge. And I would just uh, remind uh, your listeners of the example of uh, one of the last times the uh, Russian government um, had a, um, uh, it was a 600-foot uh, Murmansk cruiser, about 18,000 tons that they uh, uh, were towing from um, uh, the northern uh, 
uh, parts of Russia to India for scrap iron, uh, and they ran into a heavy storm while they were towing it. And uh, this was in 1994, and the the uh, the cruiser tore loose from the towing craft and was thrown onto the um, coast of uh, Norway. Hmm. Now, if this had been a nuclear power plant, it would have been, you know, really grave consequences. Uh, so, um, you know, this uh, this is really um, um, a really unprecedented event. And, you know, the weather is getting more and more unpredictable as the climate crisis grows. And uh, to be using nuclear power in this extremely vulnerable area uh, with uh, climate change uh, crisis in the works here, um, you know, we're talking about um, extremely grave consequences uh, if, if the... Uh, uh, if an accident were to happen. Right. I mean, every and, every every winter in the Arctic, they have cyclonic winds. I mean, they're just insane, insane winds up there. The uh, Russia is not the only country that, you know, uh, surrounds the Arctic Circle. Um, are the other countries, are the Scandinavian countries, is Canada, is the United States? Um, I believe China has uh, land in the Arctic Circle. I may be wrong on that. Uh, maybe Russia has taken up all that space. But, uh, you know, have any of these other countries that have, uh, you know, land in the Arctic uh, done anything? Is the U.N. doing anything? Is anybody saying anything? No, this is, uh, you know, this is part of the uh, expansion into the Arctic Ocean as the ice starts melting away. Um, but, um, you know, it's really a concern because the... Um, the climate crisis uh, is pretty much, you know, just uh, being ignored uh, globally. Uh, but this is one of the more vulnerable regions now. And, uh, you know, we're not even really raising the issue of this whole new realm of security threats that uh, could come from piracy or terrorism involving something like a nuclear, a floating nuclear power station. Hmm. Uh, but um, uh, China is talking about also getting into the business of um, floating small modular reactors, um, but they're shopping around uh, all over the world. And whether or not, uh, you know, these countries are, are going to present a market, uh, it's a real problem uh, because they're now using nuclear power for extracting fossil fuels in uh, a very climate sensitive area of the of the globe that's undergoing you know clearly some of the most rapid changes from the climate crisis yeah this is remarkable stuff paul gunter the uh, director of the reactor oversight project at beyond nuclear beyondnuclear.org is the website and the twitter handle paul thanks so much for dropping by and waking us up to this thanks a lot no nukes yeah there you go no nukes good talking with you as always Paul Gunter with BeyondNuclear.org. It's a, a website worth checking out and worth following.